today's video. Uh, you may be wondering where I've been. I, I got waylaid with a little bit of knee surgery, kind of slowed me down a little bit. Today's uh, video is going to be on an experimental technique to uh, try to keep deer on the back of a four-wheeler. Now, what I have used in the past of my hunting career has been bungee cords and black straps. Last year, I used some rope and ratchet straps. They work pretty good. The uh, issues that I have trying to keep the deer on the back is that where I hunt, we go up and down the hills. The trails are very rough. We have rocks and the four-wheeler pitches and rolls and having the deer on the back quite a bit of weight and I often want to try to tip you, roll you over. You've already ruined his day and he's doing a good job of trying to ruin yours, trying to get, get out of the woods back to the road. And so what I'm looking for is some way of holding the deer down on the back to forward. So I decided, well, it sure would be nice if I had some sort of a cargo net that fit the four-wheeler. I just haven't been able to find one, so I decided, why don't I just try to make one? I just never have done this before. So this is an experiment for me. Now, I use what I have around the garage, what around the house, and I have some things, and I have uh, some scraps of wood, some rope, and some things like that. Now, what I have here is some, I think this is three quarter inch nylon. Uh, it's green, it, it looks sort of sort of hunter style stuff. And I had gone to the store and I picked up a roll, I think this is 75 foot, uh, 760, it's a little bigger, a little bit bigger than what I needed. But it says it's mildew resistant, it's a nylon type of product. And uh, I have some one by material that I made the shuttle with. Now the shuttle is just one by pine that uh, routed out a kind of a U-shaped finger in the middle. And what the finger does is it gives you the ability to, to wrap alternate layers of rope around it. And there's a little notch on the bottom side that you go around back and forth. Pointy and sand off the front and it helps you go around the hole. And just with these simple things, I just figure I can weave a net. It's just very simple, very what you find in a craft store. Just, just common stuff. This is a different type of shuttle. This is one made for small stuff, like you might find a quarter or three sixteen, something small. It's uh, just one by pine. Again, same thing, sanded off and pointed out so it go through the holes a little easier. Now here's the shuttle again. Um, just point, it's made a little bit different. It's sanded off in the front, and that's just to help it go through the hole. You just have to make the holes in your net big enough for the shuttle to pass through. And, and in just a little bit, I'll give you a little demonstration on how I made the net. Now, when we get started, to get started, you just need something to hold the uh, first row down. I took a piece of scrap 2x4, made the initial loop, tied a little knot up here in the top just to put uh, a hook or a carabiner, that type of thing in and then zigzag through some pegs. And what I used for the pegs was uh, just uh, screws, just uh, Phillips screws, shot them in with a screw gun. Zigzag them in there and that gives you the bottom loop. The actual knot that we form, I think, is a sheet bit. Now, you'll end up, when you do the rows, you'll have a, a long droopy side on each other row. So on the first row, when you come down, I'll have a long row, a long loop on the outside of the first and second rows. And here's the second and third rows. You see, I got a long loop there. You just bring the rope a little further down when you make the, the third loop. And then that's how you come tie right back in. There's really nothing much to this. In just a second, I'll go and give you a little demonstration on how to make the knots. That's the shuttle through the loop from behind. We're gonna go, in this case, from left to right. And we're gonna leave a little bit of a loop that we're gonna pass the shuttle back down through. And as we snug the knot back down, we have to adjust the loop at the bottom to make sure it's the right length. But as we snug this thing back down, the rope, the new rope that would lead to the next loop is gonna be on the left-hand side. Now when we do the next loop, 
we'll do the same thing. We'll pass the shuttle through the loop from behind, up and around from left to right, back through the hole, and exit the left. Now, when we do a row going the other direction, we pass the shuttle just the opposite. And what we're doing is we're making sure that the rope, when it exits the sheet bin, is exiting on the side that the next knot's going to be. Does that make sense? I figure there's different ways I can end the weaving of the net, but I think what I'll just do is I'll return the rope above the last sheet bin here on net and just use a single fisherman's knot above it. it, it when it wants to slide, it'll slide down against the knot. Well, let's see. Let's take this off of the pegboard and see if it looks like a net. Well, what do you know? Let me get that out of the way. All right. Now, there's different ways we can handle the perimeter. We can take the same stock rope, same 7 16 and weave it around the edge and use a fisherman's knot at each one of the loops, and that'll make it a fixed size net. We could do that, or we could use the big stuff, and I think that's what I'm going to do. The floating ring rope has been fed around the perimeter and has been laid through each of the loops. We've got one fisherman's knot tied around uh, the rope and the net. I'm doing the second one right here. I gotta get let's, see, let's get three knuckles around and I gotta get around and see go through here. Gotta run the rope back up through the rabbit hole and let's get it get it, gotta go back up through there. Get up and uh, get up and uh, is what these things do is you've got back-to-back -back fishermen's knots, and what they'll do is when they slide, they'll slide back on each other so that they, when you pull the ropes, they slide down and they dead head against each other. Let's get there. You go. You know that's not going to go anywhere. Now, when this thing goes, let's see. Let's See, if it's, see how the net floats and uh, the net itself can bend and move and flex uh, as, as needed. Trim and dress the ends, add the hooks, and we're done with the project. The hooks are installed, the mat is complete, let's go put it on the four-wheeler, see what it looks like. Well, it may not be too pretty, but uh, I think it may help hold the critter on there. Bungee it down to the, to the backstop back there, to the rack. Maybe use a ratchet strap. Perimeter rope is certainly big enough to uh, hold it. The individual 716 says it's good for nine what 90 pounds 96 pounds of course every time you put a knot in it you weaken a rope by bending the fibers a little bit 